Hi, this is Terry from Tree Marie Soap Works. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this soap. It's scented with rose gold from Brambleberry's new Soiree collection. I made this in a slab mold so that we could keep most of the design on the larger surface area instead of just having it on the little top sliver. First we are mixing our lye solution. I always do that first. It heats up quite a bit and it's better to get that cooling first. I'm using Tussa silk fibers. These give the soap a really nice silkiness when you use it and they are cruelty free and these fibers are collected from cocoons after the silkworms have emerged so they're not harming the silkworms in any way. I cut this up in little pieces and add it to the water before I add the lye and it gives it more of a chance to dissolve because it's there at the beginning when the water heats up. I still strain my lye water before I put it into the oils just to get any of those little fibers out that are not dissolved. Okay, now our sodium hydroxide is added to our water and now I'm getting ready my sodium lactate. It's used at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils and it's a natural hardener of the soap. It makes the soap release from the molds a little easier and it also is a moisturizer because it's a humectant and it draws moisture to it. Okay, here we've already added our coconut oil and now we add our sustainable palm oil. This sustainable palm oil comes from a supplier that's part of the round table on sustainable palm oil, so it's responsibly sourced. I melt these ingredients in the microwave and in the meantime I measure my liquid oils. Right here you can see that I use a little squeeze bottle to top off my olive oil so I don't pour in too much since I've already measured the other ingredients. Now I'm adding my coconut butter. These pastilles are really easy to add. They're easy to measure and they're also easy to stir in without having to re-microwave your mixture. When I use coconut butter, I usually try not to get it too hot. But if it doesn't completely melt from stirring, I will microwave it a little bit. Okay, now I'm adding in the liquid oils that I measured before. Next, I add champagne extract. This is also part of Brambleberry's new soiree collection. I read later that you only need to add a few drops to add something special to your handmade soap. I added more than just a few drops, but it should be a really good soap. The reason why it's added is it adds moisture to the soap. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I measure my colorants. This was fired up fuchsia, and I squeeze a little olive oil into it, just enough to get it wet. And I use my palette knife and a plexiglass sheet to mix it all in and I just keep mixing it to make sure I got all the clumps out. And this is used at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. Since I have a little time here, I just wanna thank everybody for being so encouraging and some of you are so funny. Uh, I had a comment just a little bit ago that someone said I'm a detailed oriented freak and it just cracked me up because I kind of am. It just is how I am. So that's just funny. They said they are like that too. So. Thank you. And this is burgundy pigment. And I just showed that color sample that was used at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oil. So we are only using this at a half a teaspoon per pound of oil. With red oxides, you kind of have to be careful about how much you use because they're pretty strong. Because sometimes red oxides can tint your bubbles or even tint your washcloth if you're not careful. So I'm going to just, I wanted a little bit of a darker color, like a burgundy, so I'm going to just darken this up with a little bit of activated charcoal. And here's the activated charcoal, and I just used a fourth of a teaspoon, and, and I'm just gonna add that when I add it to my batter, just to get the color I want. colorants are from Brambleberry except for the next colorant, um, Gold Rush. It's from Elements Bath and Body. And I'm using one teaspoon and I'm putting in some castor oil and some olive oil. Castor oil is a little thicker than olive oil and I wanted it to be somewhat thick but still able to drizzle it over the top. And what I like about drizzling is it gives that little indent once once the soap is saponified, it kind of reabsorbs the oils and leaves like a divot where the oils were and it has that gold. And I think it just looks really cool. 
Okay, now our colorants are all prepared and we'll just get ready to make soap. So I'm adding my sodium lactate to my lye water and now I'm straining. This gets out any of the silk left over and also any clumps of sodium hydroxide that didn't get dissolved. Okay, now I'm going to add the lye water to the melted oils. And then once I get that in there, I'm going to measure the weight of the bowl and the oils in lye water. And then I will subtract off the weight of the bowl afterwards and get the weight of the batter. And then I'll figure my percentages that I'm going to divide it up into. For this tutorial, I'm going to use 15% for the fired up fuchsia, 25% for the burgundy pigment, and the rest will be the 60% of white, which will be the titanium dioxide. And just stick blend this till emulsion is reached. That way you'll have time to divide your batter and color it. Emulsion is just when you don't have any more oils floating on top. They've all combined and they're going to stay combined. If you don't know if it's emulsified, you can let it sit for a little while and see if it separates again. And just hand stir it after that. Okay, this is the 15% for the fired up fuchsia and the 20% for the burgundy and the last is the 60% for the white. And this is where I'm just adding a little bit of the activated charcoal just to make it a little darker. Next is the titanium dioxide and I already have that pre-mixed in a big squeeze bottle because I use more of that than I use of anything else so it's just ready to go because titanium dioxide is one of the hardest ones to mix and get the clumps out of. So I dilute it at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to three parts oil and I usually use olive oil when I'm diluting it. The fragrance I'm using for this is Rose Gold. It's a new fragrance from Brambleberry Soiree Collection. I'm happy to report it did really well in cold process. It didn't accelerate at all. Here I already figured out the percentages of the 15, 25, and 60. So I'm just taking that much out of the bottle each time and resetting and zeroing the scale. This fragrance is supposed to be tan and cold process soap, and that's why I used the white to whiten it. It does seem like it's turning a little bit off-white, but it's not going to tan yet, so I think it's going to be okay. And to me it doesn't smell like roses, it smells floral, and it smells a little fruity, and also I think comfort and pleasant and I think that part of it is the cashmere vanilla and amber whenever I smell those I think of pleasant so if you're wondering what the notes are it's a sweet soft mix of coconut candy apple raspberry red currant tulip freesia heliotrope rose cashmere musk vanilla and amber and here we just stick blend to light trace because we want the colors not to mix together. When they're too thin, they'll just kind of get muddy. Okay, this next part is pretty self-explanatory. It's just you pour most of the white in and then you kind of Jackson Pollock the top. If I had to do this again, I probably would pour from just a little bit higher to get the colors to go a little deeper. That's why it's kind of good to video your soap making because you learn things from yourself. Mm -hmm. 
this design would be good for a soap top as well. When you just have a little bit of soap left over, just spatter it on there and and just make it real uneven. It seems like the more white space you have, kind of the better. And and you can do the lines go, go back and forth across the loaf in the short way and then you make the lines down the long way and it looks really nice. Just make sure you don't get your skewer too deep or you will interrupt your design that's underneath. Okay, when you get all the color on, the last thing you do is you drizzle the gold on. Okay, and I tap down the mold to release any air bubbles. And now it's time to swirl. And I used a tongue depressor for this one. And I think if I had to do it over again, I actually would have used a chopstick because these little squiggly lines are so close together that I don't think the tongue depressor was the best tool to use in this instance. But I'm gonna try the tongue depressor the next time I do time on circling swirl. If you've seen my other videos, I've been experimenting on the different wideness of my swirl tool. Last time I used a popsicle stick and the time before I used a just a wide stick that was about an eighth of an inch wide. Both of them turned out really well. I was really pleased so I said next time that I'm going to use the tongue depressor on the Taiwan circling swirl. So when I'm swirling this in the other direction I use this glass stirring stick. And I've seen some of the other people using them and they are really nice. They slide across the bottom really nice. I just bang down the mold again to release any trap bubbles and fill in any of those spaces on the edge that were displaced. And I just put this through gel and let it stay covered up for two days. And here I am unmolding it. This is how I got rid of the little edges that were kind of up on the sides. Just use a palette knife. There's so many uses for a palette knife. And I didn't want to show you all the beveling of this one. I figured you see it in my other videos, you're probably tired of it. So I just showed the very end. And here's how the final bars came out. And thank you for watching and thank you for spreading the word. I appreciate all of you and have a great day.